Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome back to Let's Play Sly Cooper Thieves in Time for the Sony PlayStation 3. In the last video, we worked on getting the Cooper Open achievement. And since the last video, I have looked at my trophies, and there are only seven left. If, of course, you don't count the Platinum One Mask and Stripes Forever. We have... Child of the 80s, which is beat the top high score of one hideout arcade. We have Apollo Wins, which is the, which is going through the entire Bob Cooper training montage in episode three without missing once. There's Get to the Chopper, which has you doing the up and smoke job without taking any damage to the chopper in episode five. There is Craze Climber, which is Scale the Dragon Lair in under 90 seconds. This is in Episode 4, where you have to get to the top of the tower where you fight the Mechanical Dragon as Sir Galath. And then there's Cloud City, which I think is going to be one of the hardest to do. This is for Episode 1, and it's for defeating El Jefe on each tower without losing any health. There is a trick to it, but I have the feeling that Outside of one of the two sets, as I like to call it. I'll go into detail about that shortly. Out of the two sets, this one will take the most effort for one of the sets. And then there's Mark Your Territory and 8-Bit Bentley Style. For Mark Your Territory, you have to collect all the hidden slime masks. And for 8-Bit Bentley Style, you have to beat every hideout arcade's top high score. Child of the 80s, Mark Your Territory, and 8-Bit Bentley Style are all going to be done as one set, basically. It may take one or two videos to do them all, maybe three, depending on how I do it. But, if I do everything arcade-related all at once, it'll be easier for me to keep it all kind of contained. As for Apollo Wins, Get to the Chopper, Craze Climber, and Cloud City, that is what I consider the non-arcade set. And those will all be combined into one video because I don't think I'm going to have that much footage to show off for all of those. And therefore, they're all going to be their own thing. So there's going to be two videos or two sets of videos, there's going to be the arcade set, and then there's going to be the non-arcade set. I'm going to go ahead and start with the non-arcade set, because some of the ones that I'm looking at, especially Apollo Winds and Craze Climber, those are not going to take too long. And then I'm going to be spending... I would say considerable amount of time doing the arcade stuff. So for this video, we're going to be doing Apollo Winds, Get to the Chopper, Craze Climber, and Cloud City. Everything's going to be done with post-commentary, because I have no idea how long any of these things are going to take me. So let's go ahead and start this off. Get to the chopper. Remember Up in Smoke, that one job in Episode 5 where you had to drop smoke bombs for Sly and Salim? For this achievement, you'll need to drop all the smoke bombs without getting hit once. There are multiple sections to this job where you drop more smoke bombs than the last, and you'll want to be on your toes as you go through them all. Use your boost as often as possible to avoid the bombs that will follow you around, and time your bombs so you can drop them when you get close to the targets. There is a trick that makes this achievement easier. If you get hit, pause the game and restart from the last checkpoint to start the current section over. If you can get through this job hitless, with or without checkpoint restarts, you'll score the achievement. Cover, pal. 
Lass me. That outfit makes you a better thief, Sly, not a genie. Now, why don't you help me with this sword? Apollo wins. Your mileage may vary with this achievement. For this one, you'll have to play Getting Stronger in Episode 3 and get through the entire Bob Cooper training montage that has you going through a battery of trials randomly generated from the six you have to practice before you do the montage. This one can be tough, as while things can get easier along the way depending on how good your reflexes are, you'll be forced to restart all the way back at the beginning of the montage if you mess up even once. The hardest ones, at least for me, are the slingshot and the bone smack trials. With practice, you can get this one done. You'll just need to buckle down and focus. Crazed Climber. This is one of the tougher achievements out of these four. For this one, you'll need to reach the top of the tower where you fight the Mechanical Dragon in Episode 4 during the job Mechanical Menace. If you mess up even once, you have to start the entire job for this achievement all over again from the beginning, as this game saves your progress as you ascend the tower, meaning that you'll have to come back to the tower you have to climb to reach the Mechanical Dragon manually every single time, and you'll have to sit through the cutscene with Fly and Carmelita, which the game refuses to let you skip. Once you're at the tower, watch your surroundings so you don't burn yourself on any of the moving parts, 
and take out the mechanical enemies as you go so you don't get hit and lose precious seconds trying to time the catapult crash. If you're both fast and careful, you'll be able to get this achievement. Cloud City. For this achievement, you'll need to play the final job in Episode 1, Altitude Sickness, and beat El Jefe without getting hit once either on the way to the end or while fighting El Jefe. Just like with Get to the Chopper, if you take a hit at any point, you can always restart from the nearest checkpoint to restore your hit with progress and still get credit for the achievement. On the first phase, jump over the shockwave, then run to the side to avoid the line of electricity that El Jefe moves across the arena. When he rears his sword back, jump to avoid the lightning slash. After this, he will slash the ground with his swords. Equip the samurai costume and deflect the fireball that he throws at you back at him. Once you hit him, get in close and smack him around with the square button until he knocks you back. Never get right up to him if he is not stunned. After this, you will have to jump over two shockwaves. Once again, run to the side to avoid the lightning, then jump to avoid the lightning slash and send the fireball back at him with the samurai armor so you can smack him around again. As you go from checkpoint to checkpoint, take care not to run into fire or fall into the pit below. For the second phase, use the samurai armor to keep the wall of fire from killing you, then run to the side while jumping over the domes of electricity to avoid the line of lightning that El Jefe moves around. From here, you'll need to jump over the thunder slash, then use the samurai armor to send the fireball back at him before smacking him around again. After this, the pattern repeats. But you'll need to jump over two lightning slashes instead of one before you can send the fireball back at him.
After this, he only does the lightning slash the one time. For the third phase, use the samurai armor to keep the wall of fire from killing you, then run to the side while jumping over the domes of electricity to avoid the line of lightning, just like in the beginning of the second phase. You'll have to jump over two thunder slashes before sending a fireball back at him. After this, use the samurai armor to avoid the wall of fire again, then immediately take it off and get ready to jump over the lightning from El Jefe's spin attack. You'll then have to jump over two lightning slashes again before hitting El Jefe with one more fireball and whittling down the last of his health. And that is it for the non-arcade achievements out of all that I have left. Join me next time where we go to the arcade, get all the slime masks, and get both of the arcade achievements. Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!